There is the tendency, particularly if you don't have a speed horse, to kind of sit and wait and see what happens if you're a jockey. Um, you kind of need to uh, go by the pace there. I guess Jesse Campbell kind of stole it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm kind of thinking, if I'm a jockey in the race, I don't want my trainer beating me over the head at the end because I, I moved too early. And uh, the only one that was moving at the end was up with the birds, and he made a huge surge at the end. And it sure looked a bit stretch that he was going to get there, but he went way wide and must have covered a lot of extra ground. How much would you like to ride in a Queen's Plate? Oh, that'd be great. That'd be a dream as a Canadian kid. Yeah, sure. Well, be race. well, Campbell was pretty excited. He's from Ohio. Yeah, absolutely, but he's been here for a couple of years. He knows what it means to win a race like that here at Woodbine. And he's a grateful, grateful to win it. In the, in the paper, when you get it on Friday, you'll see that there's another story about Lou Tucci uh, that we did about a month ago. We had a party here, and I asked him which of the two horses he liked the best. And he says, well, right now I like Midnight Area better than uh, than River 7. And I just, just didn't connect in my brain. I just didn't put all that material together. The only thing harder than riding a horse in a race is betting on it. It takes, uh, physically and mentally, it takes much more out of you to bet a race than to ride a race. I think we all know that, don't we? I mean, these jockeys complain about how difficult it is. Egon's princess is what I'm going to put in. Egon, got a little bit of turf breeding, and I'm like, uh, then I saw the name. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, you know what? I'm like, this, 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 horse, this horse could do some serious running in here. Because the horse had run on turf before, and then was on poly. Uh, actually ran some big races last year and run a couple of good ones this year. I thought this could be the breakthrough race. How did you feel getting onto this horse? And before we, did you feel that you had a chance going into this race? And I have to say that before you say anything, that the ride was impeccable. It's a fantastic job getting that horse up there. I know the 12 had taken the lead just for a slight moment, and then you got it right on the wire. So tell, take us through the trip. Um, well, I was really happy to get back on her because I did ride her last year and we uh, ran a good third and uh, then I chose to go south. But uh, yeah, I, I was, um, I did work her before the race, she worked very strong, just a nice three eights and then I was really happy with her. Uh, like you said, she did have great turf pedigree and um, I said, you know what, they're not giving her any respect. I think she paid $46 and um, she's a winner of six times, loves the turf. Um, I think it's because she was running at lower, lower level racing, and uh, so uh, yeah, we um, she broke sharp. I took her back. There's a lot of pace up front. Uh, Ian did have another speed uh, horse in there. I think they went really quick that day. Yeah. So I kind of just judged from there, and I saved a lot of ground. And um, we did get stopped once on the turn, and. Um, she was really straightforward, really easy horse to ride, and she gave me everything that day. Uh, she went through horses very nice, uh, just passing the uh, 316th pole. Um, she went through that pack of horses so well, and uh, I just I, I knew right from there, this, this horse is going to win. Uh, I edged her out just for the wire, and we got her. And uh, it was just, it was a great win. You know, I, I, I'd have to thank Ian Black for uh, pulling it back on her. It was great. Um, yeah, I'll never forget her. <laughs> That's for sure. Hi, this is Steve Lemon. I want to thank him. He's doing such a great job. Doing great things in the area that we have. Thank you very much. Give a good time. Thank you very much for coming, Mr. Lemon. You're welcome anytime. Thanks again. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so that was certainly uh, quite a thrill to see that, and so like once that had happened, I thought, oh wow, this is a really great start to the win four. And then the next one happened and did well, then the next one happened and did well, and I needed Maha Aha to win, and it was at one to two, and I thought, okay, money in the bank right here. I think I can get a one to two shot to win, that's my uncle's horse, and I couldn't win. But that's what happens. That's the name of the game. There's no, no guarantees in racing. Like I always say, the horses don't know their odds, so. You just go out there, you handicap to the best of your ability, and then see what happens. As I've always said, you can look at this all you want until you're blue in the face, but you don't know how the horse is feeling that day. You can look and say, oh, well, it's on his toes and on the muscle and looks good and fit and great, but 
You don't know. Once they put in that gate and the gate opens, the horse can stumble, uh, the horse can veer to the left, veer to the right. You don't know. Have you had any interesting experiences like within the starting gate and that you could uh, share like, with uh, well, two minutes to post? Yeah, well, you can read your form all you want, and I am very big on reading my form before a race, and you kind of have a plan A, a plan B. Uh, but like you said, anything can happen, and uh, sometimes you have to use your plan B, and sometimes you just have to go by what the horse is telling you, you know, and then you're in the race, and I think the poly track is a big, um, you need to uh, very pay attention to your fractions, uh, how fast they're going up front, how fast you're going, uh, saving ground, it all breaks down into how you're going to win this race. And uh, But I am very big on reading my form and I try to read it to my best ability, that's for sure.